right, and then proceed to try and cut my fucking head off from my Adam's apple onwards and have a good two minutes of soaring going with a lot of gargling with me sort of dying somewhere during that two minutes. Anna, lean against the body. Lean against the body. Can you guess who, who it is? That's correct, it's Arcade Summer and today we're going to be looking at the mapping of uh, Serum internally. That means that we're going to be looking at the drag and drop situation on the GUI as well as being able to map things in more detail with more flexibility in the matrix view. We also look at the global setting. Let's dive in, shall we? Uh, okay, so there's a drag and drop situation here. Uh, it, any of these tabs here are all draggable and you can see that it has that four way arrow thing that suggests that you can drag it anywhere on the interface that is mappable. Let's just drag something over. Um, let's do that now and I grab it and I drag it and there it goes. And it's just now, it's mapped this situation here onto the level of oscillator A. So you'll see that the range is specified there around the knob in, in blue, where the start of the range is indicated by the, the setting that the knob is at with this little white line, and the end of the range is elsewhere. If I change the knob, I'll, I'll change the start. So I keep it set to trigger here. Um, you'll notice that this point here, you'll notice this point here will correspond with where this knob is pointing and this point here the maximum point of the LFO will correspond with the end of this range so you'll see it go up here and back again up here and back again zero there zero there hundred there hundred there ready go okay now if I want to adjust where zero point is then I will grab the knob itself and position zero point there and there it is and if I want to adjust where the hundred point here of the LFO is uh, I will grab this other knob here this other little thing here and drag that upwards so now it will traverse this knob uh, with the range that I've specified so what else can you do well you can take LFO one and you could map it to another knob as well. There you go. And I've actually set the I've set the range backwards this time. So let's have a look what's happening there. It's the, the range is in negative value and the range is in positive value there. I could do that to many, many knobs. I think it's something like 32. And any knob with this band around it, I can map. And also I can map these four things here and it puts a band above it like that and it still has that little range thing as well uh, and let's see how many we got 18 19 20 21 22 23 4 5 6 7 30 and we'll just turn this on to get some more one two can we do another one Assignment cannot be made because no more mod matrix slots remain. So let's talk about that. So every mapping that I do, and just let's have a look at that. Oh, it's doing everything at once. That's pretty powerful. So every mapping that I do ends up being entered into the matrix view and it takes up a slot. So we can see now that there's 32 slots possible and they're all having a source from LFO1 and their destinations are all those that I dragged to. And then the amount of the range has been set with this. That's not all you can do, but I'll talk about that later. You can also have an auxiliary source, which actually allows the possibility to have like 64 mappings, sort of, but you don't, you can use it in an, a couple of different ways. We go back here and uh, it's also, I'll just, I'll just initiate again. You can also, in the LFO section, you can also map an LFO to the controls of itself, which is interesting. So LFO1 um, could be mapped to its own rate, which is really strange what's happening now. Um, 
So the rate, oh, it's really, it's a strange feedback loop situation uh, where the rate of LFO1 is controlled by the position of LFO1. So it's just going crazy. It's really going nuts. Look at it. It's given up now. Oh no, yeah. Which actually is kind of like a chaos situation of its own. So I find that really entertaining. So remove that, but you can also go to LFO2 and you can use LFO1 on any of these knobs too. And so now LFO1 is mapped to LFO2's rate. So, and then if LFO2 was onto level, you'll hear what that's sounding like here. It's sort of just randomizing there, but that's pretty cool. Okay. so. Just to show you, if you didn't want envelope one being automatically mapped to your global volume, you would set this to zero, this to zero, that's to maximum. Doesn't matter what that does, doesn't matter what that does. And now that's nullified envelope one. And you might want envelope two to be on the level of oscillator A, like that, and envelope three on the level of oscillator B, like that. That might be some alternate thing you want to do. Let's just make a basic mapping. Let's turn on the filter here and we'll put a uh, mapping to that. Notice it's different. If I map to this, it's done it by default. It's done a unipolar mapping, which means that this point is the start point and it's actually the lower end of the range here and this point being the upper end. But over here, it's different over here. The center point of the range is here and it keeps it even on both sides. See that? There's no way of making it uneven now. And the knob shifts the point of the center. So um, that's a bipolar mapping. So let's have a look now what the matrix window has added for us. It's added two LFO1 mappings, as we can see two there. Uh, and one of them is the type is bipolar and one of them the type is unipolar. So let's explain this a little further. So you've got the source here which you can select any of the sources. Um, there's more available than you would see on the interface. Over here, you got um, all the destinations in submenu. There's a lot of destinations available. As you can see, a lot more destinations available than you see on the interface. So what do we got? LFO1 with this relationship, a, a linear relationship with this range uh, mapped to destination filter cutoff uh, with a bipolar type and LFO1 with this linear relationship with this range with map to oscillator A volume and unipolar type. So that's pretty cool. Now let me just quickly show this little menu here. You can sort it by source. So if this was LFO2, I'll just change it there. Uh, and this one LFO3, then if I sort by source, it puts two first and then three next. But if this was B vol and this was A vol, then if I sort by destination, it switches them so that's A and B. But now this is three and two. So sort by source, two and three. Sort by destination, A and B. Locking it will mean that once you change something to another preset, it still keeps um, all of these in place. And I've gone to another preset. It doesn't keep the amounts right. The amounts default to zero. Create And these are little quick quick menus. Create a vibrato because these are something you typically want. So that's created a vibrato setup where LFO1 affects the master tuning in a bipolar way and it's augmented by the auxiliary source. We'll talk in a sec about auxiliary source. You can create a velocity to amp assignment as well. That's a very most typical thing you might want in terms of mapping. Let's set up a mapping without drag and drop and we'll also do an auxiliary source. So if I, let's say, want to map uh, LFO1 and I'll set the rate there of LFO1 to one bar and I want to have uh, that on oscillator A's fine pitch, let's say, and I want to have a certain amount. So with zero sounds, I'll just get some sound going on. With zero sounds like this. Nothing is happening. Now with a bit, you can hear it slightly, a bit faster. Uh, 
Okay, and then we want to have a bipolar mapping, so I'll click that, and now it will pass through the center point, which is good for that. Um, and then we want to have an auxiliary source. The auxiliary source could be something like macro one. So here's macro one now is going to be controlling uh, the, how much this amount is. So with macro one set to zero, this amount will be like it's zero. So we should now hear nothing, nothing. And as I increase macro one, it will increase this knob. So basically auxiliary source basically maps the amount furthermore. So, all right, that's really handy. Uh, and then this output changes the overall effect of, of, ever, of it, how everything will happen. So, That basically allows you to sort of soften the whole scenario a bit. So let's say if you want this to happen, but you want everything to be a lot less affecting, then you bring this down to 26. Notice here, this little line shows, you know, the movement that's occurring with the mapping. And this shows it in a, a graph sort of way, you know, just like um, a, an automation curve is being shown there. So, okay, that's handy. Uh, so we got the curve, the curve, curve. So that's the relationship between the source and the destination is linear. And then the relationship between the amount and the auxiliary source is linear. So let's try it. Let's, let's say we had no auxiliary source setting. The curve is the consistency at which it travels from each, from one side of the range to the other side of the range. So if this will make it bipolar and it's a linear relationship, it will just consistently go from one side to the other. Let's have a look with a slower bar. But this, if I increase it, it means that at the beginning it will be exaggerated and near the end it will take more time. So, you have a very big difference there if I had that lower. So you'll notice that when it's down here, it's slower to move. And when it gets here, it goes, whoa, whoa. So it's the same here with this. Um, it slows down when it's up here. And when it's down there, it's going faster. So if I were to do that really heat, it's basically compressed the entire thing into just down there. If I were to do it really low like that, it will compress the whole thing into up there. So it would do barely anything until it gets up there. See, so that's the, the relationship has changed from linear. And that same thing can happen there. So what's mod? Well, mod will just invert. So if I go back to here and I change this to back to macro one and put it to mil, nil, and then right now set to star, it's gonna be, as you would expect, zero effect. When I increase the effect, but if I was to change that to negative inverted, then it would just be opposite. It just maps it in the opposite way. Okay. And again, this will just only adjust how that knob is going to affect this amount. So, so that is your matrix window. So notice when it's on bipolar, it's going either side of that center point. When I go on unipolar and have a look, it's now going lopsided. So let's just go through a few of the different options with source to start off with. So let's get rid of this auxiliary source and have a look at LFO1, map to coarse pitch. That's LFO1. You can have any of the LFOs or you could have the envelope, uh, let's say envelope two. So let's say it does that. Or that. I'll give it a little bit more, at least there. When I let go, it keeps them 
that's kind of interesting. I find that really interesting. Uh, okay, so that's if envelopes were mapped. Uh, we can map the velocity to the course pitch. So now uh, when I press softly, when I press harder, it goes up. And see, there's the velocity. That's kind of interesting. I could map the note number to the course pitch, which will really screw this stuff up. But the lower note, it will have a lower pitch, closer to zero to average pitch. And at the higher notes, it will change the pitch higher. So it's not going to make any sense. It's just put it out of tune, but that's kind of fun. If you had aftertouch, then that will affect the course pitch. I don't have aftertouch or polyphonic aftertouch. Check out the patchbay.io for all your preset needs and sample needs. Make sure you buy my packs, otherwise this might happen. <laughs>
have a look at oscillator one and we'll see if we can sync it to the BPM. Let's put it and we can set the rate to one bar, let's say. Yeah, so let's have a look. Okay, and now let's have a look at what other options we got. Mono is interesting. When you do mono, it doesn't do. See, if I do a chord right now. Depending on the timing at which I press each note, it will start that chaos sequence so they'll be out of sync. So if I go. They're all out of sync. But if I go mono and do that, then it, no matter when I press it, it's always going to be doing the same sequence. Okay, it's basically monophonic this or polyphonic this. Um, sample and hold just makes it into um, separate little notes. Let's have a look what that sounds like. So it's really just applying um, like a stair step to the output of Chaos One. Um, and so that's basically, it's pretty good for like nerdy science moments. Like. Um, so that, that's your Chaos Oscillators. Chaos Oscillators, no, not quite. Okay, so you have, um, what is Noise Oscillator? Well, it's just gonna follow the amplitude of whatever's in the noise thing. And let's have a look, um, what have I got? Some custom shit. Okay, so if I go now to this, we'll, and we'll see that it's set to the coarse pitch, and I'll turn this down itself and turn this on, and it should now adjust the coarse pitch of oscillator A with the amplitude of, of this sound that's in here. Sounds like absolute crap, but it's very cool. If I do it slower. Interesting kind of random that, that you can do if you don't want to use the K, the chaos oscillators. Okay, uh, really, I, I just like that. I like that a lot. So um, you can make it less affecting and you can, it's sort of like FM. It's a little bit like FM, it's similar. That's pretty cool. Uh, probably also really cool to use that to make analog sounds, the instabilities. But maybe not as extreme as that, like set this to like one and get a bit of an analog synth action. So now we look note on rand one, what is that? Well, what that's gonna do is when I trigger a note, it will choose a random position. So every note I trigger, Okay, if that was not set to, that could be just set to the filter cutoff here. And bipolar, and with a bigger range and the filter being on, then we can see every time I trigger, it chooses a random position. Okay, and then of course you have two randoms. So you might, uh, you know, put this one to oscillator A's course pitch and it will do a different random. That's just, yeah. And so the next thing we can look at alternation uh, note on alt, it's just gonna go from one side to the other side um, and alternate. And note alt two is just the opposite polar opposites of that. So see how they're doing opposite to each other. So that's what those two are. Now, if I go to macro, well, it sets these macros as my source. And I can do either one. Uh, pitch bend, even though pitch bend is set to the actual pitch bend, it's also going to change the cutoff at the same time. So, so pitch bend will be bending the pitch down here, but it will also be controlling the cutoff at the same time. Let's have a look. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I could just add a mod source of mod wheel. So that means that when the mod wheel is down, it will only pitch bend. 
And if I turn the mod wheel up, it will also do the filter. So that's pretty good. Now, MPE X, Y, Z can be mapped. If you have an MPE controller, you can, you can assign that to whatever you want in the matrix view. Uh, you can also do the release velocity, if that's something that you're interested in, or fixed. Fixed is pretty handy little um, default thing. Uh, fixed basically nullifies the source. So that becomes the amount is the only thing that does anything. So, and of course, if I set the mod wheel to the amount and I put the amount max, then the mod wheel should do it instead. Let's have a look at some destinations that are possible and we'll just take the auxiliary source off and we've got, um, we've got the volume, panning, coarse pitch, octave pitch, semi-tone pitch, fine pitch. Uh, we've got the unison detuning of oscillator A, we got the unison blending of oscillator A, we got the warp knob of oscillator A, um, wavetable position of oscillator A, the phase randomization of oscillator A, the phase itself. This is interesting, you can map it to the unison stereo position, um, the unison's warp and the unison's wavetable position. That's those things you can see here under unison, uh, wavetable position, warp and width over here. So. There's also all the same things for oscillator B, all pretty much all the things from noise oscillator and sub. You can map it to the envelope knobs down here, so it actively changes the envelope knobs. The filter, all the but all the knobs on the filter can be mapped in the LFOs, and then you've got some global. Your master tuning, that's the overall tuning of the synth, and the master amplitude, and the rate for chaos oscillator one and two. And then, of course, in the FX section, you're gonna have a lot in there, but you can also um, map any of the controls for all the effects. And you'll notice that each effects is shown at, at the beginning, EQ, all of that, distortion, all of that, flanger, all of that, phaser, all of that, chorus, all of that, and constant, which is nothing. Let's have a look at global settings. Now, global settings, what do we got? We got oscillator setting, I'll take this shit off. Now, some of them require you to uh, restart the program um, and some don't. It's also important to note that some of them pertain to the current preset that's been selected and some of them don't. The preferences, they're all global. So no matter how you set these, they will remain even when you change the preset and that will be set in into like an any in, file, some sort of um, config file. So I'll go through these, uh, but the chaos and unison, they will be per, they will be on a preset basis situation. So they'll change if you change the preset. If you, let's have a look what they all do. Default waveform overview type off 2D on 3D. Well, that's when you start the synth, whether it starts on 2D or 3D mode. So. 3D mode or 2D mode. So if I go here and I put default waveform is 3D, then when I start the synth, and I have to see this, this disc here, that saves the preferences. If I don't do that, nothing will change. Uh, piano keys hidden by default, it's already selected. As you can see, you can't see them, and that basically invokes this setting here, um, show piano keyboard, that, uh, show help tool tips, that will, that will need a restart. So I've selected that, I save the preferences, I go over here, I reload plugin, and now hold it over stuff, there. And it gives you a little description of each thing. And it's a good way to learn what the knobs do if you don't want to read the manual or listen to my bullshit. Now that's it, but too late, you got to the end now, it's a tough shit. Go 
uh, that off. I keep it off because it gets in the way. So now show values when adjusting controls, I think is really useful because now it's showing the values, but you may want it off because your door will have its value in a certain set place. And maybe you're just used to looking up at that place all the time, no matter what synth you're using and you just want that. Uh, so turning that off and so there's no value shown there. Uh, limit mod depth on drop. I touched upon what that was before. That means when you're assigning a control, if you go, let's say, if you turn it off and you save and I'll just reload. So let's say I'm dragging uh, LFO one onto level. It's now exceeded the maximum level with the top of its range. If you don't want it, if you want it not to do that automatically, you can set this limit, save, reload. So now when I drag LFO one there, it's set the upper limit to the maximum of that knob that I'm dragging it onto. Maximum is not very high there, as you can see. So that's pretty handy to have on, I, I guess. We'll stop your um, automations um, capping himself. Uh, and so next thing is silence notes and effect tail when the transport stops. So let's say the transport is running here on my door and let's say uh, I have a big fat reverb on the sound and see what it sounds like. Silence is on. So when I go, you hear that tail still happening and press stop, it kills it. It's only if it's playing, so it's playing. Okay, press stop, kills everything. Uh, same goes for, like it says, for big long releases. So let's have a look again. Press it, big release is occurring, press stop, goodbye release. That doesn't mean, that means though, that if, if the transport is not playing, there's no way to stop that release. Have a look, and you press stop, can't, that's it. You just have to wait, nothing you can do there, okay? Is there a panic button? There isn't a panic button. Double click for typeable values on c controls, that just means double click. And you can type in 0 0.5, double click, 0 0.2, and it sets it like that. I think that's really handy. But if you want to override that with double click resetting controls, you do this. And now you have to save and re-invoke the plugin. And so now when you double click, it just puts the controls to the default setting. That's it. Uh, I prefer to have um, double click typeable values on. That's, that's better for me because I sometimes want to do exact situations. Uh, like you basically have no real way to do exact situations if you turn that off. So it's better on. Um, mod wheel to wavetable position when wavetable editor is open. So if I'm over in the wavetable editor and I load uh, something, I can just scroll through that wavetable just using my mod wheel. And only when I'm in the wavetable editor not when I'm outside of the editor. That's pretty damn good. I think that's pretty nice to have enabled, absolutely. Okay, let's say I had external automation of the mod wheel there. It may affect once you go into the wavetable view, which might be annoying for you. So creating this, um, I'm creating a little automation here, right? And so if, if it's playing and I go into here and I go in here, See, I'm not even touching my mod wheel, but this is actually being automated now. So it might be annoying for you and you might have to disable it in situations like that. We have disable mouse wheel to parameters. That means when I scroll the mouse, it will not adjust any uh, knobs. So do that, save. It's kind of nice to have. So reload. It's kind of nice to be able to move them like that on the fly. Um, if you want to do little fine adjustments, to it can be useful uh, so I wouldn't disable that and MPE by default that just means in this menu here where it says MPE enable when you open the synth it will just have MPE enabled instead of disabled by default uh, ask preset change on edit presets that's just to give you so you can give confirmation so some of these it says requires reopen right but a lot of them do require reopen even if it doesn't say it so i go reload plugin and then i select a preset right and if i do uh, a knob change and go to the next preset there it goes it asks do you want to do this however if you load a new preset it doesn't include wavetable edits. If I do that to the wavetable and go next, doesn't ask. So beware, um, it's only for knobs. Uh, so that is ask. I, I usually have it set to ask. The oscillator settings, you have subsampling. Uh, it's 
by default set to 2x. Uh, you can set it to four times subsamplings or draft if you want to save your CPU while you're making the tune. When you render it out, uh, when you render out your tune by default, it will do it maximum settings. If Let's have a look here. If I went export here to something or other, you'll see here high quality for all plugins. That will set that to four times. So you can have it on draft if you want to save your ass. And you can lock the quality. That means when you go to the next preset, the quality will remain or not lock the quality. When you go to the next preset, the, it will inherit the preset's quality setting, okay? Then noise, fine. That's just adjusting by one semitone the fine tune for the noise. See how it's a percentage and it's only up, increases by one of a percent. If you want more tuning fineness there, well, you've got that to two decimal place tuning right there for the noise, okay? Uh, tracking for pitch oscillator A and B, it's not very useful if you make music, not that useful. If you wanted to automate the pitches for those oscillators externally somehow with having nothing to do with any of this note keyboard, you can actually disable that and maybe you might want to set up a situation with note number and in there to control oscillator A's course pitch and you can customize the way the pitch works for the oscillator and independent of the default way with these pitch trackings. That's why you might have that. Um, of course, if you're a big fan of Nazism, you'll leave it at 440. Or if you really want to get natural, you can put it out down to 432, I think it is. And you know, you can get really natural and get in touch with yourself and it will resonate better. And you lock that. So when you change the preset, right, it's staying like that. If you change the preset here, it will inherit, it, it will inherit the 440. Then here's where the tuning file occurs. It's the same thing as down here, load tuning file. If you click here, you can load your tuning file there as well if you want to have micro tuning and make ink and rainforest music. Uh, there's the fan. Uh, if you like, if you go over here and you've set the unison for 16 there and the unison is 16 there, and you've, uh, you've you're in poly mode with 32 and you've got 1,024 voices and you're pressing uh, you know 32 keys at once and it's you might overheat. So this fan will then come on at that point and will stop serum exploding and doing damage to your door, to your face and fingers and so on, and stop you having third degree burns to the genitals. And build, that's the build number, and it's good that it says build there, because this is a beta. I've, I've found that it's quite interesting, it doesn't let me know that. It is actually a beta version I'm running here. It should be 1.35B1, but I don't know, they just thought it wasn't important. And the date of release, so that's it. That's a data release. So that's the global and the matrix and the mapping. I'm Arcade Summer. I want to do something else now. I don't want to do this anymore.